Welcome to Developing Graphics Frameworks with Python and OpenGL, Part 10, Passing Data Between Shaders. In the previous video, you learned how to use the Attribute class to upload data to the GPU that allowed you to draw some more complicated shapes, triangles and squares and hexagons. In particular, the data you uploaded to the GPU was an array containing the positions of each vertex. In this video, you're going to learn how to upload additional data to the GPU, once again using the attribute class, but this time the data will be the colors associated to each vertex. Before we do that, we do want to talk for a little bit about type qualifiers. We used these last time to get data, incoming data, for the vertex shader. Last time we had an invec3 indicating that position data was going to be loaded from a buffer. Right? You can use both in and out, both in vertex shaders and fragment shaders, but they have different meanings depending on those contexts. In general, in and out means that the data is either received from or passed along to the previous or the next stage of the graphics pipeline. And so for a vertex shader, an invariable gets data from a vertex buffer object. You can also create an out variable, and this indicates that values are going to be passed along to the fragment shader. Right? It's actually not possible and there's a good reason for this. It's not possible to read data from a vertex buffer directly in the fragment shader. Right? Fragment shader in data comes from the vertex shader. It's data which is passed along. And the reason for this is that data needs to be interpolated. Right? The original data corresponds to each vertex, but then during the rasterization stage, Right. Each shape is uh, changed into a collection of pixels. And so we need to find out which values should be assigned to every one of those pixels inside each geometric primitive, each geometric shape. And so it needs to be processed by the rasterizer before that data makes sense in the fragment shader. And fragment shaders can also have out variables. Right? This is the variable GL frag color that we've been working with. And that indicates values are going to be written into a buffer, one of the buffers in the frame buffer. In general, you have to assign a value into the color buffer. That's what GL frag color is. Uh, it's also possible to write values into the depth buffer, although the GPU usually handles this for us. It's automatically done. We don't need to worry about that. All right. So now it's time to go ahead and write some code. So we're going to go ahead and open up uh, Sublime Text or your development editor of choice. And in this case, uh, we're going to create a new file. I always want to create it in the base directory. Since this is video 10, maybe I'll call this test 10. So I'll right click and make a new file, immediately saving it, calling it test-10.py. Now, this code is going to be very similar to what we wrote in the previous video. So, in order to save time, I'd like to go ahead and copy the code from test 9. Right, so, here's the code from test 9. And I'll just review it really quickly before copying it in to show you how much of the code is actually going to be reused. Uh, we're going to need the exact same set of import statements. Right. And again, I'd like to render six points in the arrangement of a hexagon. The vertex shader code we will change a little bit, and the fragment shader code for that matter too, to incorporate some variables which will allow us to use colors assigned to each vertex. Right. So that will change a little bit. Uh, we still need to initialize the program, so we still will need the same program reference. Right. That we initialize that with the OpenGL Utils class. I'll use the same render settings as before. And then we'll, in this case, we'll set up just one vertex array object. Right? We're just going to render one shape. We'll do a colorful hexagon. Same points as before. 
and we'll have an attribute. However, the big difference in this video is that we'll have a second attribute. In this case, uh, we'll also create some color data as well. And we'll have the same vertex count. And the update method will seem exactly the same as before. And as always, uh, we'll need to create an instance of the class and run it. So again, most of this code, we're going to reuse exactly as it is. So I'm copying all the code from test09.py. I'll copy and paste that into test10. Let's scroll up to the top and make a couple of changes. The first big change uh, is um, to this comment. We're rendering six points in a hexagon arrangement, and it's also going to use vertex colors. And so we'll start off with each point kind of being a different color. All right, uh, the biggest change, again, is going to be in the shader code. And so first I'll go to the vertex shader code, and we're going to need another incoming variable, another in variable, and I'll call this vertex color. All right, just to distinguish it from pixel color, which will be used later on as well. I also need an outgoing variable, outvec3. This has to have a different name. I'll call it color. All right, so what I need to do now in the main body of the function, I need to add one more line of code. I need to store whatever was in vertex color. I need to store that in the color variable. It's kind of like a transferring or handing off of data from one variable to another. All right, so the values for each vertex color will come in from a buffer and they'll go out through this new variable. We always have to remember to assign it. All right, to every outgoing variable in the vertex shader, we need a corresponding in variable with the exact same name in the fragment shader. All right, so in the fragment shader, we have an in vec3 called color. And then I'm going to use the values of color down here. So instead of hard coding in a color, so this is the code for cyan, I'm just going to take out the red, green, and blue components. Remember, one of the cool things about the vector data type in GLSL is that you can refer to the components as if they were array objects by index, but you can also reference them with x, y, and z, which makes sense in a position context and it's easier to read, or you can refer to them as R, G, and B, which makes more sense when the vector is storing color-related data. All right, so there we go. We've updated our code. Again, the interesting thing is the vertex shader, remember, that's going to be run once, and it's applied to every vertex. However, it's going to, in general, generate a lot of pixel data. And the fragment shader will be run on every single pixel. And the values of color, as we're going to see a little bit later, those values get interpolated, kind of like blended or averaged for the interior points of each shape. We'll see that a little later on in this video. But those are the first main changes we'll need to make to this program. Uh, we'll still initialize the program. Uh, we still only have one geometric object, the hexagon, so we only need one vertex array. We have position data we've set up that attribute. We're going to set up a second attribute now. So this is the other big change we're going to make to the code. All right, so we'll set up the next attribute and I'll call this new one color data. And I'll just assign it kind of some rainbow colors. Uh, so first will be one zero zero. First vertex will be colored red. Uh, next will be one zero point five zero and that'll be an orange color for the next vertex then one 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 uh, one one zero excuse me that's a yellow color or third vertex then zero oops, zero one zero green for the next vertex zero zero one that would be blue 
And then the last vertex, let's make it kind of a purplish color. So we'll blend some red in there. 0 0.5, 0, and 1.0. Next, this is roughly the RGB values for red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. All right. Once we've created that data, we're going to store it in an attribute object. So we'll create something called color attribute. Right, this will be a new attribute object. It stores data in the VEC3 format. And we're going to give it the list color data. Once that's set up, just like with positions, uh, we're going to need to connect it to the variable in the program. And we do that with the associate variable function. Again, we have to pass in the reference of the program and the name of the variable. Remember, th there's two related variables in the code here. right? But we're passing in data to vertex color. Right? This is an easy typo to make to think, oh, that's color data. I should assign it to color. But nope, the name of the in variable is vertex color. So the second parameter here will be vertex color, like so. All right. So we've got those two associations set up and they're stored in whatever the currently bound vertex array object is. So we're, we're good with that. Now down here in the update method to start, I'm going to render this as points. And then we'll try out some of the other render modes as well, to, just to see what it looks like and to have a chance to talk about interpolation. But uh, that being said, let's go ahead and build this project. And I'm hoping we see six colorful points. Hey, there we go. So, as you can see, uh, the colors we have here are red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. All right, got the makings of a colorful hexagon here. Now, the next render mode I'm going to use is actually going to be the triangles render mode, because I'd like to have a chance to talk to you about interpolation. Right? In this case, we just had individual points. But what if we actually did triangles? Right? What will we see there? When each vertex is a different color, you'll notice that the colors are actually blended a little bit. Right? So for example, originally in this triangle here, this vertex was red, this one was orange, and this one was yellow. For every pixel on the interior in this shape, it'll take a weighted average of the colors of these three vertices. And in general, if a pixel is closer to one vertex, that vertex has a bigger impact or influence in the calculation. Right? So the pixels closer to the red vertex appear more red. Those closer to the yellow vertex appear more yellow. Closer to the orange vertex appear more orange. And same down here. Uh, in this triangle, the original vertex colors were green, and blue and violet, and those colors all get averaged. All right, and it's kind of fun to see what happens with the other render modes as well. So let's, for instance, maybe do lines. And the lines, uh, we set the line width to be fairly thick, so you should be able to see the color blending a little bit. All right, so this is a line which shifts color from red to orange. A line which shifts color from yellow to green, and a line which shifts color from blue to purple. If we were to use the draw mode GL line loop, and save and rebuild the application, uh, here this is really nice. It kind of looks like a rainbow going all the way around from red to orange to yellow, green to blue to purple. As that interpolation is looking pretty nice. And finally, uh, if you'd like to see the entire hexagon filled out, uh, we're going to use triangle fan. Go ahead and build that. This is honestly my favorite out of all of them. So again, we see the colors kind of blending into each other a little bit. All right, so we can see you know the red blending into the purple. We can see the purple kind of blending into the blue. It's, it's almost like a color wheel, except it's a color hexagon. 
And so that's how we're going to pass data between shaders. Uh, right now, the most important data we can pass is vertex colors. In the future, uh, in the far future, we're going to have additional data to pass between them as well. But this is a nice way to kind of create colorful pictures, and it also illustrates the use of multiple attributes. So a vertex array object can manage many attributes worth of data. All right, thanks for following along. And next time, we'll talk about another way to color shapes using something called uniform data. But for now, thanks for watching.